Hello, church family and friends. Here we are again, worshiping the God that we serve. Uh, it reminds me of Psalm 147, verse 1. It says, Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and how fitting to praise him. And of course, we are told in scripture in Philippians to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Today is a day of praise where we can come before God and we can utter our voices in thanksgiving to him. So wheresoever you are right now, I want you to give God thanks, give God's praise, for he has been good to us. I have a topic I want to speak to you on today. When hurting really hurts. When hurting really hurts. Before we go into the scriptures, I invite you now to bow your heads with me. Let us pray. Gracious Father, God of heaven and God of earth, God of the universe, we are thankful for one more Sabbath day with you. This is the day that you have made, O oh God, and we will rejoice in your salvation. The enemy, Lord, can be on the attack. But help us, I pray, to keep our faith anchored in you. As we open your words now, Father, we pray that you may speak through your words. Uh, may every heart be blessed. and May your name be glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. When hurting really hurts. There's not one person on this planet that's alike. Even identical twins have their different characters. But there's one thing of which we all will experience in life, and that is grief. Grief. That's right. Uh, in fact, grief can happen in many different ways. It could be grieving for the loss of a job, grieving for the loss of possessions, especially during this time of crisis. Many have lost all of the comforts or some of the comforts that they're used to. It could be the loss of relationships. A close relationship has been severed and the grief that is experienced as a result of it. Grief comes in the form of health challenges where our bodies are in trouble because of all the diseases that seem to attack us, or maybe our loved ones as well. Grief could come in the form of death, where those who we cherish are no more, and the pain rips through our hearts. So the big question then really lies is, how can we work ourselves through grief? Does the Bible have practical answers to this problem of grief? And so today we are going to take a look at the scriptures and we are going to examine the book of Job today. Now, I, I want to, to follow along in your scripture, if you wish, or we're going to look at Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And I'm not going to go through all the story, but you know the story about Job, right? And many times we speak about the patience of Job. But the truth of the matter is, Job was an emotional wreck. That's right. And of course, he might have good reasons why he was so emotional because of what he had been through. But the fact still remains, Job experienced severe grief, and it causes him emotional trauma. You might have recalled, Satan came to God one day, and he was boasting about all the things that he's doing up on earth. It's as if everyone on earth was following his lead. And then God said to him, have you considered my servant Job? that there is none like him, that he walks uprightly no matter what. And of course, Satan says, listen, 
You know, Job only served you because you blessed him, because you put a protection around him. Now, take away all that protection, and he will curse you to his face. And so God said, okay, go ahead. And of course, you remember exactly what happened to Job. Job was there at his house one day, and then a servant came to him and told him, listen, Job, we were, we were in the field with the animals, and we got attacked. And so all your servants are killed, and the animals have been stolen. And while that servant was speaking, another servant comes and said, listen, Job, uh, we were out, and fire came and destroyed all the livestock. And all your servants have been killed. And then while that person is speaking, another one came again and said, Job, the camels have been raided. And over 300 camels and the servants who were watching over them, they too were killed. And just imagine for a second, friends, you would think that is enough. But then afterwards, another servant came and said, listen, Job, your children... Remember now, Job had seven sons and three daughters. And he said, your children were together in the house. And a disaster came. And all your children have been killed. And then, of course, if that wasn't worse, later on the story tells us that Satan even attacked Job's health itself. How much can a person bear? Job was experiencing shock, shock. And that's what psychologists tell us, that one of the first uh, ways or stages of grief is that shock process, that shock process, where many people find themselves in that situation where they cannot believe what has happened because it was completely unexpected. Psychologists, we are told, analyzed that many people, including children, go about their daily activities while experiencing chronic ex episodes of shock. They're just living in that moment of shock and denial, of course, too. They become trapped, we are told, in this emotional state and are unable to move on and spend much time in hypnotic hypnotic trance. So they're in the stage like Job where the shock comes into their life and they just do not know how to move on, how to get out of the situation. Uh, other people live in the state of denial, cannot believe what is happening. It reminds me of a, a boy just 12 years old and as this boy came home one day crying to his mother, and the mother was concerned about the son, and she asked the son, son, what's happening to you? And of course, the son was very shy to open up to his mother. And then after periods of persuading the son to speak, the son finally spoke up. And said, Mom, I was abused. I was abused by the priest today. Sad story, but it's true. I was abused by a priest. And the mother was in complete, first of all, shock to hear such news. But then she go into a stage of denial where she did not believe her son. She said, no way, son. This could not happen. He's a man of God. He has a family, he has a, a wonderful family, relatives, nieces, you name it. He, 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 he proclaimed God's word. He would never do such a thing. And so she lived in the stage of denial all her life while her son was suffering that grief. She couldn't get herself out of it because she was not expecting such shock. And such denial came as a result. And so that's what was happening to Job. And this is what happens to many of us at times as well. 
we do not know how to move on from this episode. But there's more to the story. Job did not only experience shock. I want you to notice what else happens to Job in Job chapter 3 and verse 2. Listen what happened next. Job says in verse 2 of chapter 3, let the day or let the day of my birth be erased and the night I was conceived. In other words, Job's shock, Job's denial comes to full-blown anger. He was angry because of what was happening and he says, "Listen, it would be better if I wasn't born." He explained in his anger. And so this takes us to what we call the second stage, the second stage of grief. And uh, grief, the second stage, anger. It could be, we could be angry because of the loved ones that we lose. It could be angry because of the doctors that was attending our loved ones. It could be anger over life issues itself, or even anger with God himself. A family lost their father. And so the relatives, they got together to bury the father. And when they got together, instead of expressing comfort and encouragement to one another, all of a sudden, they started to blame one another. Well, maybe if you have done this, then our father wouldn't have died. And then another sister would say, maybe if you had done this, we wouldn't be in this predicament that we are in right now. And so the blame game started. Why? Because each person was in the stage of anger. Anger. Right? And when a person gets angry, it's easy to start to put blame on other people. You see? It's a grieving stage that the individual is going through. It's quite okay to feel anger because we are emotional beings. The problem is when that anger remains, then that's when it becomes dangerous. This is why the scripture says that we should be angry, but do not sin. We have to let go of the anger. So Job was in this angry stage. But that's not even the end of Job's story. Notice what happens next with Job in chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Job explaining his situation. He says, I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge. You are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your hands. While smiling on the schemes of the wicked. Job could not understand his situation. And so he started to question God. God, this doesn't make sense. Why is it that the wicked seems to be flourishing? And here I am who is doing your work, who has been perfect before you, and yet still I am going through all these suffering. Job's grief turned into what we call depression. Depression. I want you to listen as he continues to speak about the condition he's experiencing. In, in, in verse 8, he continues his spiel. You formed me, he said to God. He, you formed me with your hands. You made me. And now you completely destroy me. Why, God? Verse 20. I have only a few days left. So let, leave me alone that I may have a moment of comfort. And then in Job 30, verse 16, listen to his words again. And now my life seeps away, he says. Depression haunts my days. 
Job was not only shocked now, not only is he angry, but now he's depressed and he's completely blaming God for what he's going through. Because when you really think about it, why would God allow all these things upon his people? It just doesn't make sense, you see. At least in Job's mind, it doesn't make sense. So that takes me to the next stage of grief, and that is called depression. Depression. Psychologist tells us that serious depression can occur when anger is internalized, when anger turns inwards. In some cases, healing can be nearly impossible when anger goes untreated and can result in serious depression. See, that anger, it's okay, but let it go. I told the story before of a lady who lost her son and in, in an accident. And of course, no mother would ever want to go through the pain of losing a child. So she went into a state of depression, couldn't get out of the depression. And for years, 10 years, 15 years, she continued in the state of depression, couldn't work, couldn't do anything around the house, just day by day at home and continually living in that state. Why? Because she was angry and she internalized that anger. She kept it inside and would not let it go. And so she lived in a state of depression. We need to let go by the grace of God of anger when it comes our way, lest we too can go into that state of depression like Job. And this is very important for us men. Uh, ladies, let me speak with the men for a second. Men, we are in the state where we do not like to speak about our challenges at times. We like to keep things in. And when we keep these anger issues in, yes, we're put, setting up ourselves for full-blown depression. Let it go. Let it go by the grace of God. So Job, he was depressed. But there is something else about Job. You think, you think that, was, that would be the end of Job's grief. But no, like I said, Job was emotionally wrecked. There's more. I'm going to look now at Job chapter 31, verse 21 to 22. Listen to him now as he, as he tries to, to negotiate with God. Oh God, in verse 21, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. That's Job 13, 20, sorry. Oh God, grant me these two things, then I will be able to to face you. God, in other words, God, if you do these things for me, then this will happen. Okay? That's a bargain. Okay? Uh, and then notice now in Job chapter 31 and verse 21 to 22, he says, If I raise my hand against an orphan, knowing the judges would take my side, then, here we go again, then let my shoulder be wrenched out of place. Let my arms be torn from its socket. See? He's bargaining with God. God, if this happen, then this will happen. Uh, God, if you do this, then this will happen. Bargaining. Bargaining with God. And that's what a psychologist tells us when individuals go through grief. They uh, enter a stage of what we call bargaining or magic. Right? Bargaining and magic, tri and magic are tricks we used to try to hustle ourselves out of a bad situation, right? And magical thinking centers around if-only statements. Uh, the adult may carry this kind of invalid, illogical thinking to destructive extremes, we are told, right? So it's so a bargain like, for example, a person is on an airplane, and the airplane is going down. The person have the fear that he or she is going to die. And so he goes and bargains with God. God, 
if you do this, if you save me out of this situation, then I will serve you for the rest of my life. God, if you can help me with this, then I will change my ways. God, if you bless me with lots of money, then I can return our faithful tithe. It's a bargain. It's an episode of grief. And of course, the magical thinking, like I said before, normally starts with those if statements. If only I would have done this, then this wouldn't happen. Our children would say, if only I was prettier, maybe daddy will love me. If only if I was this, then this will happen. That's magical thinking, you see. It's not logical thinking. And it causes grief to prolong when we have these distorted thoughts. So Job was experiencing this. Listen, friends of God, righteous people, people who belong to God, go through grief. Okay? The question is, how should we get through it? That's the big question. But... Let me continue. Job was depressed. He started to bargain with God, but the story hasn't finished yet. Job had severe sadness as well. And I want you to turn your Bibles, if you wish, to Job chapter 19 and verse 7. Job chapter 19 and verse 7. Job, he cried out, I cry out, help, but no one answers me. I protest. But there is no justice. Job 30, verse 31, he says, My harp plays sad music. And my flute accompanies those who are, are those who weep. And then later on, he continues his complaints. He was completely sad. Completely sad. And that takes me to the next stage of grief. Sadness. Sadness. Sadness is, that, is, is the healthy means of releasing pain and loss. Sadness, we are told, is ordinary. It is appropriate response to sad events. Best of all, sadness does not mean endlessness. Right? It's okay to be sad. But we cannot stay in that stage forever, right? So we are told here that sadness is when we settle down for a good old-fashioned cry. Just let the tears flow. Let it out. Let it out. Do not internalize it. Let it out. You may want to cry alone, we are told. But at times, you might find it very helpful to do your crying on a sympathetic shoulder. Someone who cares. And get together and just let it out, friends. Do not keep it in. God understands. The prophets of old cried. Even Jesus himself, we're told, wept. He was experiencing grief as well. And you too will go through it. I will go through it. Let it out. Let the tears fall. God sees them. And God says, listen, I will wipe. I will wipe the tears from your eyes. He understands. He knows what you're, what you're experiencing. But here's a question. Who allowed it in the first place? God allows it. Doesn't mean that God causes it, but God's, God allowed it to happen. But the key is God is going to go through the issues with you and with me. We just need to stick with him. Well, there's one more stage I want to talk to you about here that Job experienced. And uh, this time I'm going to look at Job chapter 42 and verse 3. Job 42 and verse 3, if you follow. And Job says, You asked, Who is this that asks question or questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. So what's happening here, friends, is that Job started to question God. God, why are you unjust? 
Why are you allowing these things to happen? Where are you, God? And so on and so forth. And God did not answer Job. In fact, God himself started to question Job. And said, listen, Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I just stretched the clouds out like a curtain? In other words, God showed Job, he did not answer his questions. Remember this. There are times, friends of God, that we will never know the answers to the questions we ask. There's going to be times when you, you, you would try to understand and you will never understand. Like in the case of Job, he couldn't understand and God did not give him any explanation. However, God showed Job that he is the sovereign God. God showed Job that, listen, Job, I am in control. Yes, it is true that you cannot understand your grief. You cannot understand your pain. But in the same time, learn to depend upon me. So Job realized and says, listen, God, I was asking too many things. I did not know anything about. It was foolish of me. Uh, later on in Job 42, verse 5 and 6, listen to his words. I had only heard about you before, he says to God. But now I have seen you with my own eyes. And then he says, I take back. I take back everything, Lord, everything I said. And I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. See, Job came to the place of acceptance. See, acceptance. He come to realize that, listen, because God is in control, I can accept what God brings my way, or what God allows in my life. It's okay. It is hard to bear. It is challenging. But God is still on the throne. And God is going to take care of his own acceptance. So that leads me to the next stage of grief that we're told by psychologists. And that is stage six, forgiveness, resolution, or acceptance. Acceptance. The painful issues of the past no longer have control of you when you come to accept the situation. Yes, it's something that happened. Yes, it's something that brought me pain. But I'm not going to allow that issue to run my life right now. Acceptance. Yes, my father passed away. Yes, I had grief. But I'm not going to allow that grief to control me right now. I have to accept that he's gone, and I have to move on with my life. And then, of course, we are told here that forgiveness isn't uh, logical from a human standpoint. It is a journey of the heart more than of the mind. It brings the release and acceptance that enable you to get on with your life. Let, let me tell you something, friends. One of the worst cases to be in, one of the worst situations to be in is to be in a state of unforgiveness. It eats us apart. Uh, this is why Jesus says, listen, as many times as possible, learn to forgive. Forgive. Even though you might be feeling a certain way, forgive. Because if we do not forgive, the person who hurts the most is our own selves. And so he says, listen, forgive others as I have forgiven you. Now, forgiveness is not saying or excusing that maybe what the person did was right. You cannot excuse wrongs, right? But you are accepting the fact that it happened and you're offering forgiveness as God's solution to your pain, right? You might not feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it because God said it. And friends of God, when we follow what God says, it brings healing to our hearts. Let it go. Accept what's happening and trust God to help us through it. 
And so, in summary, uh, the stages, again, of grief is shock and denial. Um, anger is the next stage. Depression, as we talked about there earlier on with Job. Bargaining and magic is another phase. And, of course, sadness. And lastly, forgiveness or resolution and acceptance. Now, friends of God, uh, this... These stages do not necessarily have to happen in order, right? A person can experience sadness before they experience anger. A person can experience anger before they uh, experience acceptance, you name it. It can happen in different order. You have to realize which stage you are in or which stage the person that you know is in. And then, by God's grace, uh, follow the stages of how to get out of it. Right. So the, the, the next thing I want to share with you here is how. So how, Pastor? I realize that maybe, yes, I have some grief, or maybe I had some past issues I need to deal with, or maybe in the future I might have to deal with grief. So really, how? How do we go out or get out of the stage of grief or recover from grief itself? Well, one of the ways, friends, is simply just write a letter expressing your anger. You'll be surprised sometimes by just writing. It's just letting that anger out. Let it go. Let it go. Right? Let it go. Write a letter. Uh, Allow yourself, we're told, some time to cry. Just cry to God. Pour out your heart to him and let him see what you're going through. He already knows anyway, right? So why not just be honest with him? And let those tears flow so that God can wipe them away for us. Another stage or something else we can do is to ask God to help you see the other person as a fellow sufferer and give you the grace and strength to forgive. Friends, when things happen in our lives, when conflicts happen in our lives, it is so easy to attack the other person because that person has wounded me. But we have to remember, friends, the battle, we're told, is not with flesh and blood. The battle, the battle is against spiritual forces. It's against the powers of wickedness in high high places. That person who has done me harm, that individual who has caused me pain, is also a child of God. It's also a child of God. That person also needs help. And so we need to ask God to give us the strength to realize that that person is also a sufferer as well. Uh, Something else we could do is share your sadness with a friend or a support group. One of the problems when we go through grief is that we, we choose to be alone, and it's not healthy. Sometimes we find ourselves secluded all by ourselves with our thoughts, and friends, it, it only leads us into deeper depression. Talk to somebody. Share the concern with a friend or a support group, and you will see it makes a world of difference. Uh, For those who are having chronic situations, I would suggest seek some professional help. Sometimes, friends, God has given people the skills that we don't have to help us in situations where we cannot control. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We're here for one another. We're here to support each other. Another step we can, or something else we can do, is to give yourself permission to grieve. Okay? It's okay to go through the process. Give yourself the permission to do so. And then I would strongly suggest to invest in others. Sometimes when we are going through pain, one of the best things we can do is think about someone else. Lord, how can I help somebody else? Especially in this COVID-19 crisis. Lord, let me go and pray for this person over here. Instead of me focusing all the attention on myself, invest in others. And by focusing on others, it's amazing how we too start to feel better afterwards. See, it's one of those steps that heal, bring healing. Uh, Being unselfish or being very interested in the needs of others. Friends, I think you could speak to any psychologist or health professional. 
they will tell you that one of the best remedies for stress, grief, depression, anxiety, you name it, is exercise. Get out there in the fresh air. Go for a nice walk. And all of a sudden, those endorphins, those happy hormones start to be released into, the, into, in, into our bodies and make us much more happier people. Help us to overcome the grieving process. Go for a walk. Get some exercise. It will help. I've experienced it for myself, and it makes a world of difference. I also want to let you know that another thing that you can do is to remember but accept present realities. Remember, you can, it's okay to remember the incident. Sometimes it's hard to put that hurt away. It's there in our memory, right? So trying not to remember is not going to help. It's okay to remember. But when we remember what happened, try to make it not affect your present. Okay? Accept your present realities. If a person, if a, if a person uh, loses a leg, the person can remember that car accident that causes the trauma, right? But the person has to accept the present reality that now I only have one leg, and so I cannot do certain things like I used to do. Accept the present realities, even though we might not forget what had happened. And of course, like we said before, ask God for forgiveness. And lastly, friends, most important principle of all in order to overcome grief, do not forget this principle whatsoever. Trust in God. Trust in God. God will be there for us. God will be there with us. He's going to take us through if we depend upon him. Trust in God. God understands. God knows. Jesus was looking at the multitudes one day. And he could see all the challenges that they were going through. And with compassion in his heart, he understands what the next person was experiencing. The hurt, the grief, the pain. And so he looked at the crowd and he said, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29, he said these words, Come, 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 come to me, come to me. All of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, come to me. And I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. Because I'm humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Friends, God wants to give you peace in your hearts this morning. Into my heart this morning. Regardless of what comes our way. Uh, somebody says that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. You see, the key is as long as I have Jesus, as long as he's given me strength, as long as he's given me peace, as long as he's with me, he will carry me through. There's nothing that comes your way. There is nothing that Satan can bring to God's people of which God is not aware. There's nothing whatsoever. But God is going to carry you. He's going to take you through. We only need to place our trust in him and find our rest in him. And so, friends of God, this morning, as I close, I want to challenge you. Let us take our burdens to Jesus because he will carry us through. Before I even go further, I want, me to pr I want to pray with you this morning and ask God to bless you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Father, sometimes our hearts, oh God, just cannot sing the songs of praise because our hearts are heavy. 
The challenges of life sometimes, Lord, weigh us down. But, oh God, we are glad to know that our hope is in Jesus. Help us, O oh God, not to focus on the things around us, but to focus on you who is able to carry us through. I pray for that individual this moment who is experiencing grief, or for those who might be, Lord, I pray that you may be with that person. Help that person, Lord, to go through the grieving process, but to go through it with you. And I pray, O oh Father, that you will give each one of us victory over the enemy. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends of God, we're all going to go through grief. As long as we're in this life, we're told that we will go through tribulations. In fact, the Bible says it is through much trials, much tribulation in which by which we shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It's going to happen. But I want to encourage you this morning. Trust in God. Stay close to him. Let it all out. Do not internalize it. And our God, who is great and wonderful and sympathetic, will carry us through. Remember now, we are here to always be of assistance. If you, if you need spiritual support, emotional support, contact us. Let us be there for you. Let us be there for each other. And may God bless you this week. And may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Until next time, God bless.